there, welcome back. Mari is here, and today we have Horizon Forbidden West. And despite the fact it's complete edition, I'm gonna talk about the main game. So no DLC, so all the tips and tricks I learned while playing through, and also at the end of the game, I realized how it things going. So information that could be useful for me before and how I played all that in this video. And also, of course. Everything will be written in the description, so with timestamps, you can skip through for the tips you missed or you already knew, it doesn't matter, but easier for you to use. And also, if I mention, if I skip something or, I don't know, don't mention that you think it's vital for this game, just comment and I'll pin the most valuable comment there so everyone can see and know how to play this game. And let's not waste any more of time just the last warning minor spoilers because i need to show sometimes a map otherwise nothing here can be spoiled not gonna mention any story nothing feel free it will be unlocked there is no crucial things as such so let's jump point by point first is fast travel all the time so anywhere from the game without any fire fireplace nothing just opening the map and if you mouse on the locations where you can fast travel, it opens up the fast travel, as you can see this is shown here. And it says, hey, you're gonna use fast travel pack. At the first, I was hesitant to do such jumps, but trust me, you want to do that. Saves a lot of time, especially there are hundreds of them on the maps. I hope it's hundred. There are a lot of them, right? Anyways, uh, don't be afraid to use them they are super cheap to make doesn't cost money cost just sticks and meat so you will have them plenty especially if you follow my tricks tips and tricks you will be fine trust me faster well don't be afraid to use these so next is hunt animals just as i showed you and mentioned you will need that meat for example this whatever animal is running around it's but we can try to hunt it down or we can skip and just go for a coon or whatever so this is the easiest way to see them and one another reason more important than hunting for me is when you have where are you there you are uh as you can see when you get it you got not only meat but also additional um, wild meat or, or some other items that are absolutely crucial for pouch upgrade this is going to help you with meat production and also when you open up your workbench under pouch upgrades every type of animation can be upgraded and they always use uh, these um, resources money is one but another one is they all come from animals not only the ones that are running on the ground but also fish that you can still uh, capture in the waters and also flying so vultures and all those things whenever you see something moving hunt it down you will get meat and you will get also these resources both of them are important minor thing but craft when empty and that is regarding those fast travel items so you can press and hold r then basically it opens up this fast travel pack as you can see and it shows i have 21 so le let me show you i can demonstrate it what happens when you are empty so you can hold 50 when you press and hold ah, press and hold it see you see it fastens up so only when you are absolutely out of them when you do that it will be way faster than if you all the time refill these it takes some time it gets frustrating so don't be afraid just use them and then don't buy just craft them in such um fashion and it will be super fast super cheap super amazing right next tip is don't buy everything so there will be a lot of sellers and you can purchase armors and everything and tools and, and resources and by everything i mean you i had the idea that i want of course also for youtube videos to show off every single item and the fun fact there are a lot of them so as you can see i purchased this is the first vendor so i purchased of course this hunter bow it costs um just a little bit 
but the fun the fact is i will i will i'm not going to use them it's it's how to explain this hunter bow don't have the casual arrows for example so it is super unique and you can substitute it with anything else so be aware don't buy just for buying and you will you know with the fast travel tip you can always come back and purchase those items they don't go anywhere but once you spend the, that precious money that you will run out at the beginning of the game often yeah you will then think oh why i purchased this thing or that thing so keep an eye for that not everything must be purchased right in a similar fashion upgrade only what you use so this is on a workbench so you see these icons show i have them equipped and i have a lot of items that are i can upgrade them but there's no point of it obviously and as, as you can see i have a lot of these spares they cost at the beginning the problem is a beginning it seems like they are pretty cheap and later on the rarity grows and so the expenses and so the levels how many times can you upgrade and all those resources you end up literally putting yourself in the shoes where you can't sustainably upgrade them all so the only exception would be and you will use that a lot especially from my tips is hunter's ball that's that is something that is useful to get fully upgraded otherwise think twice the same goes of course for the for your armor have them a lot of them purchase gain from the quest doesn't mean that it is higher rarity it's immediately better we'll get to those points later but be mindful trust me at the start it looks like it's easy later on it's pretty big problem next tip is scan all the time and by scan this is the thing that does the scanning and what it does is reveals all the items and especially the how rare they are right so after a fight you will often see a file and it's just easier for you to understand oh this is the definitely the highest higher rarity so let's prioritize that or even totally skip the gray ones but not only pressing the button but also when you press and keep you see how much things reveals that i can use in in a combat and of course as i mentioned also that's how you can see animal that's when you press and hold and my favorite of course is when you are somewhere near when you get need to get high it automatically reveals where you can actually climb in the cliffs not all the cliffs are climbable for example so that is all the time literally whole playthrough you will be running around and pressing so it's easier this is like basically a, a, a helper or for your playthrough all the time something similar as actually in assassin's creed i remember this, this vision helps to see and i'm just for whole playthrough so do that all the time don't be shy if you have anything where you can put on better um some, some keyboards or where it's easier for you to to, to press it trust me if you want to press you will be pressing that all the time all right next thing is the deep scan and why it is most useful for such fights when you deep scan you can tag enemies otherwise when they are wandering too too far or you can't see them through the windows or anything once you tag them they will be always there and it's also helpful when you are in the combat even if it's melee combat you will see notifications and, and basically at what, what angle or from what side you can expect them. And of course, you can also uh, see if they are moving around and only one can be shown at the same time. So how I usually do this when I approach some camp or where I need to clear, tag all of them, there is no limit and the closest or what's or the boss in, in, in some camps you want to know where it is and where it's going and, and, and how big of a road it is that's also super advisable before you engage in any of these combat right all right next tip is to highlight upgrade parts and there is a specific thing to it so when you have 
deep scan and you've done uh, scanning, you see there are more than just, you know, the, the, the main part. So you can, with Z and X on computer, you can switch between these parts that are attached to enemies. And what I am referring to is this, when you have ah, my big head, you see there is additional icon that, that shows here a uh, key upgrade resource, right? So that is highly and basically the highest value for that any animal, any machine you are killing, that is most precious, let's say. And what allows this, this thing is to tag it with pressing button E. So now what happens, let me show you. Um, fun thing is with yellow is every single part that was possible to switch shown and also I tagged and with this purple is that one particular part that I want from this and every animal, well not animal, machine, from machine to tangle and uh, to, to remove and one thing is um, to mention as you can see I'm not even engaging and these parts are still highlighted so in the middle of fight, if the fight is too long, I tend to also just open a deep scan and just close it. So again, I have highlights for the yellow, not particularly ta uh, tagging anything else, but it helps to recognize weapons, weak parts and all of these things for, for all the possible enemies out there, right? So this is a bit trickier. Avoid destroying part. So you might be confused. Don't be. This is example to show showcase what I meant by that. So when you have these parts, you see this is a big, big machine. So uh, most likely and all the time you will have these this this line saying destroyed when killed, which means if you haven't removed this part from the body, basically lying or someone on the ground when this machine will be killed this part will be destroyed so you need to remove before but pay attention there are these parts something else now just colored i don't know that's not the focus the focus is you see persistent kill and another line contains resources if intact so there are machines where some parts you need to attack to remove before before killing the machine and then there are other parts that you absolutely need to avoid hitting and only then when that machine will be killed you can access and then get out of those items you will see just study these these machines and you will differentiate one part from other and easy as that you're not gonna destroy what you need to keep right so now we know that we need to remove those parts how to do this and my advice is hunter's bow because it's cheap to make arrows and also advanced there are two type different types of arrows so let me show you what i'm talking about here so uh, i'm showing this one this is advanced uh, precision arrows this is different this is not a hunter bow but what i'm showing you here is pay attention to the numbers in the middle of the this radial setting it shows how much damage it makes and how much removal damage it has so it's basically more damage than removing things from the previous tips you know that you need to remove some and a lot of parts the valuable parts before killing the enemy so this is not ideal ideal is this for example one of my favorite uh, bows pretty well mid to late game but it is a uh, hunter's bow and there are different uh, arrows hunter's arrows and advanced hunters as you can see damage is lower than this this broken shield which is basically how good it is at removing particular parts from enemy and that also disables there some some attacks some some specific um, element elemental attacks so that's pretty cool and super super advanced not highly advisable but you will be able to get this bone as well as you can see it is absolutely insane uh in terms of removing these pieces 500 fully 
not fully, almost fully upgraded and almost no damage. So this is insane, but also those arrows cost a lot, which is something to keep in mind. I'm gonna switch back. My advice is stick to those two. And if you're wondering, then yes, this Hunter's Arrow pack costs one metal shard. You will make 15 arrows. When you are talking about advanced, it costs 10 metal shards to uh, make only 12. What it means, it basically casual arrows over advanced arrows are at least and even more than 10 times expensive so you know they are not 10, 10 times better best case scenario they are two or three times better so if you are not super rich with the metal shards uh, then you can stick with you know a little bit more shooting than than, than with advanced this is something regarding arrows and this is basically my bread and butter playthrough because just killing is not good enough you need to remove, remove those parts and there you need precision not many other weapons uh, provide that hunter's ball for that and, and in terms of cheap arrows in my opinion best ever All right another thing to keep an eye is difficulty my advice is playing on hard you're not that hardcore player play on normal and the reason for that is simple if you have lower difficulty then basically all your shooting and all your weapons will basically kill these enemies the higher difficulty the more health they have so in at the end the fun fact is for example such a such a huge uh, machine has so many things you can detach before killing if you play on super easy difficulty you can detach just some of them and machine will die. The rest of the, the, these containers will be destroyed if they, they have this uh, destroyed and killed tag. So, I haven't played on nothing lower than hard and most cases when all the things are detached they're just a few shots away from killing. So I'm just saying might be for some of you normal but otherwise I see downside of playing lower difficulty than wise right next point is about armor and just this is more of my suggestion you can choose yours but i highly recommend going for concentration their deep concentra concentration concentration region all these items that are on various item uh, various um rarity armors so all always you will have some some type of armor in your hand with these um, values and on top of that what i do uh when we are talking about these additional waves sorry uh, just in front of that but it's all the fans increase the fans but i highly recommend to go with melee armor why because melee is one of the biggest problems that will kill you all the time ranged you can avoid and jump and everything but melee is what at least for me was the most problematic so Weekly, why concentration and what what's so good about it? So, all the previous points I already showed and, and mentioned is how to uh, detach some items and something. Look what happens when you have basically armor and, and hunter's bow and everything else. I'm far away. I'm not going to engage. But look what happens when first of all they move and second of all pay attention to the zoom. This should be moving anytime soon, hopefully. Come on, man. Yes. So, when you press shift, first of all, you have slow mo. Second of all, you have highlight. You have zoom in. And when you have some small parts to attack, both of them basically is oh, one shot. Okay, cool. So, concentration is the energy that is not visible on any of the bars. It's when you start it right next to rectangle, not rectangle, the, the aim, to see this this gray bar. It's the slow-mo, it's, it's why I like this build. You can choose whatever, you can switch, you can move around, everything just is in slow-mo. When it's out, I have a super quick region, basically few dodges away, and I have it already. I can go back in slow-mo and 
deattach one item after another and so I have no problems with these upgrades or whatsoever. The next tip is about equipping everything and by everything else I mean every or most element. Uh, this is the radial menu of my items I have. Of course this is end game. Uh, when you have lower level items they don't have so much variety but thing to pay attention is my favorites is always carrying around these uh, acid have them on bombs so acid removes and basically damages armor then explosive spear is must have that removes entire bunch of armor when you have removed those valuable items from from machines and then you just need to kill it but it has full armor throwing few of these just blows them off and of course elect, uh, this uh, shock also is helpful so you see whenever i am encounter some enemies they will all have some weak um, elements and, and they are strong against so when you have full this radial with then then you just see what what's their weakness and you can immediately adjust so you do, don't need to go in inventory and switch some bows and something like that so my favorite is this this um blasting aggressive blasting bombs that covers three of elements single-handedly then fire and and and, and uh, explosives are here so just very useful especially minute late game mid and late games when you have stronger enemies to fight against this tip might seem silly but hear me out uh, sell valuables and spares and i'm going to show you the trick so uh when you sell items at the resources you have these valuables they don't have any other uh, reason just to be sold so selling for shards right easily can sell everything you will sell that but that's not the, the key of this point the key is when you browse down these are the key upgrades that now I showed you how to remove them and you will have, but you see they are not in many, like in big quantities. Let me scroll down. There are some gear upgrades, a lot of various uh, things and items in this game, but let me show you where the key lies. For example, these are absolutely dropping from almost all enemies and you see i have huge quantities of them and even lower you can scroll down and there are ammunition resources these resources are spares and you see i have what is this machine muscle blaze chill water 200 out of 200 only 200 um, shards can be made seems like nah not valuable wrong these well these items when they drop you can carry only 200 the rest of them are sh sent to your chest and look what happens if i open the chest especially i did this in the early game you see this is my inventory we just ch uh, check where are, oh yeah the resources drop down 200 but when you look at the stash that's basically spares on top of what you carry around machine muscle 1400 of them blaze 600 800 so pay attention what is left over from carrying around but in your stash so you i can see that blaze and chill water i can easily sell off everything that i need to pick up back from the chest and sell again so as you can see there are a lot of them way more than you thought not everything can be sold for example this wood but um especially in the early games these uh, metal bites and purge waters and chill waters they drop quite often and yes little money but beggars can be choosers that's how you make money in early game right so next tip is as in previous horizon go for all next as soon as you can uh these are this is how they look like they reveal the the fog of war remains but they reveal where what is there will be a lot of question marks basically super helpful at the early stages just run through the unknown until you get them uh, one of them is locked you that will be you need to progress through the main story 
don't stress about that but what is important is rumors so let me show you what how they look like when you arrive later in the game i think it's somewhere in the middle they introduce something like this they say listen to rumor and person is just you know sit back and sit next to it and they will tell oh there are enemies something something it's not just telling it will reveal on the map what it is and basically it also checks in a, under the quest uh when you have quests there are enemy camps or or something doable or, or ruins or something something it basically um these rumors you sit you listen then you go away if you and as once you come back they will have next rumor so they dynamically reveal as as long as you have something around unknown they will tell you oh yeah there there there's some enemy so treat them like additional quest givers side quest i at the start i thought they're dumb because they talk quite lengthy especially the first arrival but do them do listen to those rumors you will thank me later so at this point take cautiously there will be a lot of people against it but for my playstyle and everything food potions and traps i put all together because one by one uh just check the food you know there's a buff and everything but my problem with this is you see i, I am at end game i haven't sold or used any of the food i haven't used none of them so all of these three items i totally skip for the game and i'm gonna mention why so for food you see i have killed a lot of animals as per my tip and everything i can make only two of these balls so these items are so rare and you don't want to waste time just hunting some, some silly animals and second of all it's it's some of these boost for seven, seven minutes it's two three fights you will be riding around along and listen uh, listening and watching cutscenes more than than this time it's in my opinion if the buff is not at least uh 30 minutes it's absolute waste and it i don't know I, in games i just skip these super short don't need them just lower 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 the difficulty than if you have absolutely troubles but shouldn't be the second is potions also they you can carry around so little three of them what i'm showing you here is just three of them they work really short period of time and my biggest problem is in the middle of fight when you absolutely need that extra something something it is so lengthy animation when she drinks it's just annoying as hell so i haven't used none of them and uh, similarly when it goes for the traps uh, let me show you you have such huge amount of traps and, and and potions and everything they are at the end they are really powerful but they are super expensive to make just honestly i have them uh received from some some rewards or or, or drops or opening chest but i have never used them i have spare of them and most of the problem with, with these traps is you can attack only enemies that are patrolling and those are stationary you need to aggro them when you aggro them in the middle of a field uh, uh combat field you can trigger the traps yourself you need to be aware and then combining many enemies attacking from different uh, locations when then they are flying from all around these traps are not sustainable it's it's at the start it seems like cool idea but you remember you need to remove these parts and everything so you will just you know it's you do you but i totally played through on hard difficulty not using single food single potion single track so i believe you can do it too right and if you're not convinced this is how to do it uh my favorite of all surges i have unlocked all of them is this one it's tough tough and tough and and sorry i can't pronounce it but even at level one of course i upgraded later on but through the whole playthrough i have tried others and i thought all others and some others will be cool like like um invisibility and such things 
Nope. This is just flat out giving you heal over time that if you are not just bluntly staying and, and trying to avoid all boss combats, all encounters, many waves, everything you can live through because once it depletes and stops working, you pretty, if combat is still ongoing, either it's finishing soon or you will get at least one piece back and you can enable it back and, and, and again have this passive healing over time without drinking animation without limits nothing just purely my favorite mid late game all game if i knew it sooner i would start using it right away highly advisable to get it as soon as possible and of course melee damage resistance remember as i said melee damage is most of the damage you will receive uh the rest of that of course you will still have you can pop on top of it your healing herbs but this is just flat out my favorite of them all, right? So overall, uh, on the skills, I'm not going much in details, but I'm gonna say to go for actives and passives. So there are three, four different types of skills. And I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna take, I believe this one. No, no low health. One of them is my favorite and I'm, I want to see which was which one was it the one where you can absolutely no 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 sorry for this so at the end of every single one of these skills you will have at the side two active skills which basically change how and what is going on well, basically all your playthrough yes i found it Finally, I found it. This is my favorite uh, active. Why I'm saying going for actives is you can skip a lot of them. You just need to connect the dots and you can go straight down. And once you get them, they might, and in many cases, change how things, uh, items, tools work. For example, this one is gradually uh, healing when you are in smoke, smoke bow. So basically you, transform your smoke bomb into healing bomb right so this is absolutely insane and this is my favorite when enemy is down or, or just further away you can grapple and basically kill a critical hit from the distance so this is my my favorite of them all and this is an active then when you uh, zoom in these actives are at the end of all the every single vertical you see there. Uh, but what also is important is to understand when you click on them, they are saying at the top below the title, passive boost. They are also my next favorite or the favorite. That's why I mentioned here. Um, let's, let's go for, for the same uh, here, Hunt, Hunter's Tree. Uh, this depletion of concentration skill how fast it's recovering, um, stamina, all the attributes are there and you can boost them quite a lot. Uh, for example, the saying going after this totem, totem it's uh, health region, delay, what else? Healing, healing speed, uh, damage taken is reduced. Also, I think in this tree was how much herbs you get. Healing, no healing of oh, this one yeah also gathering more uh, from the plants it's active skill in the middle so you see it changes the form passive active and then we have the surges and what i'm getting at is you will see there will be weapon techniques and honestly many many weapons i don't use for example i don't like the heavies or 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 what was this one silly uh, that looks like boomerang so basically you will not be able to and you will not use all of these weapons all the time oh this one yeah the shredder gauntlet i haven't used it i i hate them it's not for me so every every point spent on these techniques where you can equip only one 
trust me not 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 worth it it's that's why i have all the passives boosting my passively my my character let's say but these techniques yes i have unlocked for my my weapon my hunter's bow i use that bow and yes that's that's how you can save some of these valuable skill points and and going for what you actually need and what you actually want all right so one technique i can recommend for all the setup i advise to play with is for hunter's bow this one knockdown shot and you can see it's it's right there in the tree uh a bit further down and what it does it absolutely disables the machine let me show you how it works um so we have this one machine well it doesn't matter it's interested in something something so what we can do you see full on tactics we see already what i want to get from it i slow down time i shoot it off ah damn it critical hit damn it let, let me get back to something that doesn't die from one shot all right all right let's try it with this one so we have two pieces to remove i will just remove one and let's see if i remove one it's still there and it's still angry so what i can do is shoot this that was my uh knockdown shot and it immediately disables the machine and I'm going in for the kill. So here again, removing the back, it's still pretty alive. I do the knockdown shot and I can immediately do a critical strike. Almost enough for killing both. One or two bolts and that's it. So this knockdown shot is pretty awesome, especially the, the lower level you are. Is there any other machine? No. But you can easily don't need those, but this knockdown shot, if you can use it and use it pretty fast right after the first shot, uh, you will be able to skip the part where the machine aggroes all other machines. Basically, before it calls, before it alarms everyone else, you shoot if the next shot immediately after is disabling shot this this knockdown shot the machine falls down and if you finish it off with critical and some other you know helping <laughs> helping uh tactics or, or big point hits you can avoid alarming everyone else around so this is really important especially the beginning of the game so this might seem silly but hear me out uh there are a lot of points where you can spend and remember these surges can be upgraded on that later but i have 68 skill points left and there there's nothing i need nothing i additional need that's a lot of extra but at the beginning and the middle game you need those points and you can get them by doing everything and when you switch i don't want to spoil showing the quests what what's there but when you select a quest or something, it usually shows that the reward will be two skill points, one skill point, three points, skill points. All the things you do, as, as little or, or big they look, you will have a reward. Either it's a skill point or even better, some cool, pretty good armor or, or weapon. It, it shows or, or you don't know what the end of the chain will provide, but so far I did all of them almost went for completionist two or three things left and it's always rewarding and these skill points you want them and why i mentioned why this this tip says mark it is saying that because i can't show you i have completed them but there will be allocations and things that for example for example this will be one of them uh underwater thing uh these these areas you see them they are marked in the map that's what i'm saying mark them but at the start of the game you will not be able to go, go them you need additional tools and there will be more these iron flowers and 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 some explosive walls that later in the game when you proceed with main story you will get additional tools 
and then you can come back. And it's better that you know where they are. It means you need to mark them. So even if you can't complete them right away, try to get and eliminate all the question marks. For example, I still have here question mark. I don't know what's there. Oh, unknown settlement. Okay, now I know. <laughs> so uh, these question marks are the ones that hide something. Uh, what's later in the game, you will be able to ac access. So be good fan and uh, basically help your your future self out and mark mark all of them it's this game is not uh, assassin's creed where uh, most of those points are pointless no those points are absolutely 90 percent you will use them later on in the game so next tip is don't upgrade surges we are getting back a little bit with the skill points and why i mentioned this is reason is simple uh getting first point is yes highly advisable then you can test it out, see see for yourself for your playthrough. But the problem is the upgrade to the second level requires three skill points and the third one is five. So if I want to upgrade and if you want to upgrade every single one of them, it's eight additional for every three. So it's 24. Uh, yeah, I can't even do this when I have finished the game. So it's you are unable to upgrade all of them as far as i can tell maybe some with this level ups and something like that but um put one point test them out and if absolutely necessarily then yes go for those upgrades because keep an eye also when you upgrade them they most of them have additional let's say bonuses for example i thought this part breaker i'm i would be using more because there's a chance to trigger a knockdown on component removal and there's also a 50% chance per val per hit to for valuable scrap to drop. Sounds good, sounds amazing and I ended up still all the time running around with Tothan and my setup hunter tree, hunter bow with advanced arrows, what's up, what not. So as good as all of them sound test before you spend those upgrade points, especially in the uh, early game, I advise against upgrading any of them. Mid game, yes, then you will understand how you play, uh, how you play the game, and then you can upgrade for these, because they cost a lot. Eight additional skill points allows you to pick a lot of passives that work most time, all the time in the background. Well, this work only when you enable it for some tougher fights or whenever you need it necessarily all right the next is upgrade tasks when you are at workbench and you miss some some of the resources for example this is my bread and butter hunter's bow you can make a task showing where to get these resources for example in my case i have what i miss apex uh, tremor task heart and some fire club suck so you can press f uh, all the buttons are described so I'm in front of it and it shows do you want to create this and you want to make activate it yes so you create a task to track these items now what you need to do I also activated it immediately and now on a map it shows me if I go here this is where the tremor task site is and this is where the fire cloud is living so if I I have marked them previously so that's the previous points also help out when you have marked where where what a machine is it automatically show you to the closest of course you can fast travel and get those items and once you have them all in your sack it will not show anything on your map it will lead you back to workbench and say hey it's time to upgrade you have everything you need fun fact if required item drops from the enemy you haven't encountered yet there also will be nothing shown on the map it will just say i don't know where it drops you need to reveal the location so play through play more uh reveal those question marks under them at some point there will be enemies and then this 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 such quest will say oh i know go there you will get items there all right so this is about level mismatch something unique but hear me out and I decided, yes, I can, I could spoil you. 
Nah. Yes. The map doesn't matter. The quest. So this, uh, the thing is about level mismatch. I have done the quest. Now this quest is leading to Burning Shores DLC. It is level 38, which sounds like, you know, the end game basically, yes, leading to DLC. But fun is not fun. Is when you're looking at, I'm looking at Cauldron, there is one Cauldron that is even higher level. And if you look at Rebel Outpost, there are 40 levels. My assumption was, and I always play games in such, I have a story, story mission level, let's say 20, and I do all the side quests that are same and lower level. So I know I'm not pushing like, you know, the imbalance. And in this game, it does not match. You have the final and the, the whole progress seems to be lower level. And then some side activities are even higher level, which is a bit weird because I, I was a bit frustrated that I ended up the game, finishing the game, because I thought that when the end level will be 40, then obviously the cauldron will be also, then I do cauldron first. Nope, the, the final quest was, I think, 38 level or something like that. So they do not match these, these numbers. I don't know what to do with this information, but if you follow the same logic as I had, weird logic, I know, but it does not match. So do those quests, side quests and everything before, even if they are way kind of level higher, which is weird. Now you know, all right? So this is about dumb user interface. And hear me out. Uh, here, this is the starting area of the game and something. So you see, I have these, these, these blocks basically show that there are quests I can do, like, Something is not done there, which somewhat feels weird because, you know, when you mouse over, you see this is gra hunting grounds. All right, fine. And, and similarly, you see they are marked green, which means, yes, this green means completed. I can't select them, but somehow these hunter grounds, hunting grounds can be selected. And then again, there is something happening in the, on, on, on the main, um, first um, village, the area, or something like that. But I can tell you right away, it it is really dumb user interface. You need to mouse over. Some of them will immediately say, hey, nah, this is complete. Don't worry about that. And then, for example, here I come back and this is the hunting ground that says, yeah, you won't find trials like these of course, anywhere. there's a hunting ground quest or something. You open up, oh no. All of them are completed. Everything is done. There is nothing to do. So this this interface, I don't know who created it and why it's like that. Let me select it. So you see, I have a quest that says, hey, hunting ground. I can make it active, but there is nothing. Nothing that that actually is to activate. And in a similar fashion here, when you mouse zoom in, this is the meal mealy pit where they train and, and show everything i have done every single activity and, and be the champion and everything and only when you mouse over you see oh it's completed why the fuck then you can make it as active quest i have no idea but it's frustrating as hell keep an eye for that and for example why these completed um, sunken caverns cannot be why they are not green like, you know, complete, it's a total mess. It's pretty hard to distinguish what's done, what's not. So keep an eye, don't lose your mind over it, all right? And this tip is for settings. I usually start with settings, but in this case, no. In general, there are a lot of things, but most important is pickups. When you, by default, it was pickup animations, which means whenever you pick something up and there will be a lot of things on the ground, especially after the fight. Oh boy, it's frustrating. I don't know why the hell there are animations. Please do yourself a favor, uh, remove this. Either it's no pickup animations or even auto pickup, whatever suits your, your need. I, I was running with no pickup animations. And while we are here, there are also a auto shield wing and also some 
uh, gauntlet runs, the quick time events, how you want to proceed them. I removed the sh um, uh, this, this show uh, headpiece because, you know, I don't want to. It's 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 ugly. Let's be honest. And camera shakes I disable. So there are some things I highly advise to remove. Uh, yeah, hard difficulty, lim limited privacy, of course. But most important, this pickups. This changes how you play the game because you will pick up a lot of items. All right, and rest of them, how you see it fit, I'd say. But yeah, don't sleep on them. Now oh, you thought we are done because 25 tips are over. Nah, this one is extra bonus. You can absolutely skip it, but I'm gonna say because I'm, I will just announce it uh, how and what to do with. I call it easy arena because uh, actually in this pit you can do the pits. They are not as hard, despite the fact all the melee is absolutely frustrating in this game, and I hate it. But hear me out. Uh, one, when you do these challenges, training challenges, and later on there will be arena where you fight, you can change your difficulty level. You can just arrive here, change difficulty to easy or story or, or normal, like, you know, a notch down, complete it, and then scale back whatever was your previously. Yes, it sounds like cheating or something, of course, but I went on hard and all the pit masters everything was doable frustrating yes you have to learn the final boss for this pit master when you are close to end game it is just such a huge like the enemy kills you in three or four hits tops you need to hit him like hundreds of times and it has shield it's it's unfair as fuck Scaling down difficulty makes it less spanch, uh, the, the bullet spanch, the, the hit spanch, and the same goes for Arena. Arena was, I played through with a hard difficulty, you will, at the end of the game you will see, you will know when you uh, are in Arena. Hard difficulty, everything fine, I can do everything, but there are challenges where you don't have your own weapon. They're like, no, you will use this thing, this thing, this thing. None of the items I use, I like, I particularly enjoy. And then you have to kill enemies, specific enemies with specific weapons. Oh boy. First one I did and then I was like, nah, screw this. Lowering difficulty going through sounds and we can count this as cheating. But you know, the game does not do any favors and it's absolutely unfair as fuck. It does not scale similarly as boss fights or story missions or something. Their level are not as bad, but in arena and these pits, the final final fight is just, I don't know, some absolute masochist made them, so feel free to use this tool, this tip to, to you know, help yourself. And that's it from my side. Lengthy video, everything I learned. There are some, of course, always you can add more but i think these 25 are most important let me know if i missed something absolutely crucial you want to also mention in the comment section if you have questions i will answer them if you learned something of course this is my point where i need to say subscribe like and all that but you can also not subscribe you can also not like it's all good for my side but algorithm appreciates if you show some love right all right guys We'll meet in other videos. Cheers.